C. Amen. That's our sister Knox. Let me just say, if you have attended any of our conventions or, or other youth services, um, she has been one of those that sometimes uh, all by herself would do praise and worship. She's a blessing. And you know, sometimes people don't hear it all the time. So I just want to let her know tonight that she is a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. She is a blessing to the body of Christ. Sometimes we get knocked down, we get discouraged, and things don't go our way, and we wonder does anybody care? We wonder does the Lord even care? But Sister Knox, I want you to know tonight that we care. We, I don't think you ever been to Cobham, but we care about you. I didn't think so. You know, um, she might tell you in a moment before she sang her uh, genealogy, who her grandmother was, and and. Uh, these people are so connected in the house of God. But we're going to give you now to our sister Knox. However the Lord has given to you to bless us, then we are waiting to hear from you. God bless you, dear. God bless you, Apostle Raglan. We want to say praise the Lord to everybody. Um, just grateful to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that we are the church? Amen. And... Um, in this pandemic, amen, it's proven to us that we don't need to be in the building to worship the Lord. That's right. So I uh, just want to say a uh, happy feast to everybody. We're anticipating the word of God on tonight. So we won't uh, hold you at length, but I want to give honor to Lady Jane Raglan, amen, and to all of, the, all of the saints of God from wherever you are, from wherever you may be listening to me tonight. Uh, it's just good to see you all and to be in your presence. Um, as uh, Apostle Ragland has stated, uh, my grandmother, amen, was a pastor, amen, in Memphis, Tennessee. I think her and my grandfather, they, they planted several churches in the house of God. But uh, their last church was, in, was here in Memphis, Tennessee, and she was pastor in Memphis for over 40 years. So uh, my legacy goes back uh, a, a little ways in the house of God. But we're just grateful, and we won't hold you at length. We'll go ahead and do what we've been asked to do tonight. And we, it's an honor and a privilege. Just you didn't give your grandmother's name. You Her <laughs> name is Elect Lady Josie Carol Williamson. Amen, amen. Amen. <laughs> Anybody know that God is working for what? This is your season that, and that God is working in your favor. Amen. I have some music accompanying me today tonight so just bear with me for just a second this is my season for grace and favor this is my season to be what I have sown. This is my season for favor. been perfect but I sure been faithful God's got a purpose and I know he's able I've got a seed in the ground that he's blessing no more stressing I've got a seed in the ground now I know him I can show him for grace and favor. Oh, to reap. This is my season for grace and favor. This is my season. Everything is working 
tonight god bless you god bless you god bless you we thank god for you let me just say uh sister knox is our style to, uh, we this week is at the end of the service after our uh, uh bishop slaughter preach we have what we call we go into um the social hall and everybody that's on will be chatting back and forth. So if you can stay with us, we appreciate it. Uh, kind of hard to give you accolades and hear the saints appreciate you for what you have done tonight. But your song tonight, so appropriate for the season, amen. We had Apostle Best on last night and he was talking about sewing. And your song just followed up with that. And before I just bring Pastor on tonight, let me just say, I got a text today from somebody who heard the word last night acted on the word and sent me a picture of a bunch of $50 bills that they received today. Why? Because they acted on the word of God. Amen. Yeah. They sowed and they received. Don't miss out on your blessing. We'll talk more about that as we go on. As you know, this is one of the three times of the year, according to Deuteronomy 16, to not, not appear before the Lord empty here at the house of God in Cobham. The saints always have a special offering. We don't put an amount on it. I know some churches that give this, give that. We just say give as the Lord has prospered you. And I'm telling you, um, you know, the, the amounts that we have received from time to time varies. But I, and I'm saying this, let the Lord touch your heart that you can bless. You can bless um, by uh, Facebook. I'm sorry, um, by Cash App. If you're on Facebook Live, you see that. You see the information about uh, how you could just contact the church and, and send it in by mail. Um, our Cash App is dollar sign. C-O-B-H-A-M-V-A. That's Cobham, Virginia. That's, no, I'm sorry. That's dollar sign H-O-G-C-O-B-H-A-M-V-A. -A. So you um, bless in the dollar sign. Again, H-O-G for House of God. Cobham, House of God. Um, now I'm messing everybody up. House of God, H-O-G. 
Cobham, C-O-B-H-A-M-V-A. I think I got it right that time. If not, they'll tell me about it later. But I am so excited. This brother came to um, Virginia last year and his wife and for a youth service, and it was a blessing. Amen. We enjoyed them. We enjoyed the, the, the word. We enjoyed the camaraderie, the friendship. And tonight he has agreed to be with us as, as the preacher for the night. And we don't tell what to do, how to do it. When we give it to you, uh, Pastor Slaughter, it's you. Between you and the Lord, whatever he has given you to give to us. Uh, Pastor Slaughter, I will say this, is the Pastor Rama Tabernacle in Dallas, Texas. God bless you, sir. We are so blessed to have you here with us. It's yours. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's just give God a praise while we, amen, can tonight. We thank him for his blessings and for his miraculous power. We want to, first of all, before we move forward, give honor uh, to the uh, distinguished apostle, amen, uh, Apostle James Raglan and Lady Raglan. Come on, let's give God praise for them tonight, amen, and to every other person that is on the line in your prospective places. Amen. I thank God for a part of our church, Raymond Tabernacle, being with us. Amen. And also the Memphis family being with us on tonight. Amen. We thank God for you all. And we thank God for this, uh, this feast of tabernacles that we are in. And I've been hearing that the Lord has been blessing every night. And so we just believe that he's going to take us a little higher tonight. Amen. We thank him for uh, just being who he is. And this is definitely a season of favor. Uh, blessings and miracles. And so we thank him uh, for being just who he is tonight. I don't count him short. Amen. Regardless of what we are looking at, regardless of what we see, amen, happening in the, in the, in the news, happening in our environments, happening in our neighborhoods, in our cities, God is yet faithful and he yet abides faithful to his people. And so we thank God tonight. Amen. I want to lift up a couple of scriptures. I'm not going to be long tonight. But I want to lift up um, the scripture in 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18, uh, verse 41. 1 Kings 18, uh, 41 is where we want to go tonight. And I want you to understand that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Amen. It's important in this day and time for the believer to understand and to know that no weapon, that the weapon may form, but it will not prosper against you. And so we thank God for that tonight. First Kings chapter 18, uh, beginning at verse 41, the reading of the word says, and Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and his, to his face, and uh, face between his knees. Verse 43 says, And said unto his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass that at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass that in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. And the word that I want to give you tonight is look again. Uh, you may not have a neighbor that you're next to. And if you do, just look at them and tell them, look again. Uh, it's important that you understand that we are in a season where the favor of God and the blessing of God is moving in our lives. And the favor of God is upon our lives. He told us in Deuteronomy that I will cause the blessing to overtake you. In other words, I will cause it to tackle you. But it takes a faith and a belief in order for that to happen. One of the things I want to 
Don't want to really talk about the rain too much tonight, but there is one in particular thing that I do want to talk about, and that is the power of sight. In this season, it's going to be important that we as believers be able to see. Elijah sensed that something in the, there was, he sensed there was something in the atmosphere. The scripture says that Elijah goes and he begins to pray and he calls upon the name of the Lord. And in the midst of his praying, while his face is still yet prostrate in worship, the scripture says he rises up and speaks to the servant and says, I want you to go down to the sea and I want you to tell me what you see. That's the principle there that lets us know that God speaks to us in the midst of worship. God speaks to us in the midst of our prayer. And God speaks to Elijah and Elijah senses that the atmosphere is about to change. He says, what must, what, what, what the present believer must understand is believe that he is able to sense the seasons. So we as believers must be able to sense the seasons that we are living in. I, I don't know about you, I don't sense it from CNN. I don't sense it from Fox News. I don't sense it from the people on the job. I don't sense it from negative people. I sense what God is doing by the spirit of God. And so Elijah senses that God is getting ready to do a move, that God is getting ready to do something in the life of his people. It's important that we understand not only that, that if you are going to walk, and this is a very important, that if you're going to walk with me, you got to see what I see. It's important in this day and time as we connect to one another. The Bible says that we can touch, some, we, we, that, that if we touch one another and believe that God it will move in the midst of us, and that's not a physical touch, but that's a touch in the spirit, that if we can get on one accord with one, with one another, that God can begin to move in our lives. So it's important that we as believers be able to sense the move of God. The next thing I want you to understand and to see, watch this, is God spoke this to me. He says, tell the people that it is time to reset your eyes. In other words, what you have been seeing or what you have been focusing on has been distracting us. And so God says it's important that we reset and refocus our eyes. In other words, we must be spiritually trained to see what God would have us to see. That's going to be important for us to understand because improper vision leads you to nowhere. So it's going to be important that we see the things that God would have us to see. It's important that we understand that this is a season, not only where we are hearing God, but we must be able to see as well. We understand not only that, that I'm, I believe that I, as, a, as, a, as a believer, that I am, I am an effector of change. You must understand that we as believers are effectors of change. What do you mean by that, preacher? What I mean is that exactly what Elijah spoke. Elijah spoke uh, uh, in chapters earlier and said that there shall be no rain, that for three and a half years, no rain would come. He was an effector of change. And then all of a sudden, God releases him to speak another word that says that it's getting ready to rain. Why? Because he was an effector of change. I want you to understand that the word of God is in your mouth. The effectiveness to change is in your mouth. It's not in the mouth of other, of other believers. It's not in the mouth of other people. What you need is in your mouth. God says, when you speak a thing, it shall happen. When you speak my word, it shall happen. When you speak what I've said, it shall prosper. So when you speak, you affect change around you, not only in your life, but in the lives of other people. Because Elijah not only affected his own life, he affected the life of the servant. He affected the life of the king. He affected the life of the people by a simple word that is getting ready to reign. So we find that we are effectors of change. We, as people of God, are effectors of change. And we must understand, and this is for leaders, it's important that we understand that leaders never, we should never have people around us that cannot see what we see. I refuse to, in this season of my life to have people around me that cannot see what I see. Elijah speaks to his servant and he says, tell me what you see. The servant says, I don't see anything. What's interesting, if Elijah was praying, he had gotten word from God, he speaks to the servant and said, tell me what you see. He was not asking the servant for his 
for his permission or, or, or even for his approval. What he was actually asking him is to confirm what God had already spoken. He says, so you don't see it now, go back seven times. And after the seventh time, you're gonna see what I see. So it's important as leaders, when people are with us and they're following us, it's important that they see what we see. That's gonna be important. God says that the weapon that you must watch for the rest of this year, watch this, is the weapon of distraction. The weapon that we must watch out for the rest of this year is the weapon of distraction. It is easily in this season to be distracted. The enemy gets busy around this time because he wants to distract the people of God. He gets busy around this time because he wants to stop the seed of God. Uh, they said apostle was talking about sowing on last night. It's easy to stop our ears when it comes time to sow because the enemy wants to stop the reaping. He wants to stop the harvest that God has planned for your life. So it's going to be important that we as believers in this season that we do not get distracted by things that we see that we don't get distracted by things that are around us it is a weapon of the enemy it is a weapon that the enemy uses it is the plan of the enemy to stop the blessings of God in our lives and I believe that we are coming to a place of abundance where this is a double portion this is a double blessing where God is blessing his people and so it's important that we understand that. The other thing we must understand is this. I will ask you the question, what do you see? What do you see? What is it that God has been speaking in your spirit? What is it that God has been showing you concerning your family? What is it God has been showing you concerning your finances? What is it that God has been showing you concerning your mental health? What is it that God has been showing you concerning your body? We talk about physical all the time, but there's just as much mental problems as we have physical problems. But what do you see? What is God speaking and declaring over your life? So it's going to be important that we see the right thing. Look at somebody and tell them, I got to see the right thing. If you got somebody in the room with you, I just got to see the right thing. So it's going to be important that even though, watch this, the servant was telling Elijah he saw absolutely nothing, the prophet did not get distracted by what the servant said. He understood what God, watch this, he understood what he heard as opposed to what the, what the servant actually said. Because it's important that we hear God before we hear man. Uh, man will sometimes mess us up, but it's important that we hear God before we hear man. What did God say? And so Elijah says, I don't care what you're saying, tell me what God says. And he leaves the servant there until he sees what God said. That's a preach there. So it's going to be important, people of God, that we understand that it's time to look again. The Bible says, watch this, that there were there would were, there were be people, and we must understand that there would be people in our lives. Amen. Not all people that are bad that will tell us these things. Some will tell us, tell us, tell us these things in order to try to keep us to play it safe. But I come to tell you in this season where we're at as a people of God, prove God to be who he really is. I told our saints during atonement, don't ask God and put particular before God that are easy. Don't put stuff before God that you can get done yourself. Put some hard stuff before God and trust God and his word. For he told us that I keep covenant with my people. So it's going to be important that there will be people in your life that claim to see nothing. There are going to be people in your life that claim to see nothing. That's why I don't tell everybody what God is doing in my life. I don't tell everybody what God has said because everybody can't handle what God is doing in your life. But there will be people at times that will say, I don't see what, I don't see what you see. I don't see God doing that. And you have to be very careful. You got to be careful with it. So don't allow people or don't let what they see distract you from what God said. I'm going to say that again. Don't let what they say distract you from what God said. Elijah did not allow the servant to distract him from what God said. That's important. Understand this. Watch this. Understand this, that it is important that you should never let a person change what God has put in your eye. Never let a person change what God has put in your eye. And when I talk about the eye, I'm talking about the spirit. Don't let a person change what God had placed in your spirit, man, to do. What we, what do you see? That's another question. What do you see? Elijah, watch this, stirred at the right thing. That's going to be important because Elijah stirred at the right thing. So when I begin to look at this and I said, God, what do you mean by Elijah stirred at the right thing? He says, son, don't you understand that Elijah did not just see it? but he stopped.
stirred at it. Anytime you stir at something, you put full attention on that thing. That means nothing. Nothing else around it matters. No other, nothing else in the environment matters. The only thing that matters is what you gauge on. And God says, in this season, gauge at what I spoke over your life. Gauge at what I said concerning you. Gauge at what I showed you concerning your life. Because Elijah did not uh, get distracted by other people, but he stirred at what he believed. It's going to be important. So God says, watch this, in this season, see well. In this season, you got to be able to see well. In other words, you got to ask God to remove the scales from your eyes so that you, in this season, watch this, can see well. The next thing I want to leave you, this is the principle. God says to me, he says, one of the things you must understand is that one of the things the enemy is afraid of is an individual, watch this, who has power to see. One of the things that bothers the enemy the most is a person who has power to see. What did he say? My people perish for the lack of what? Vision. So when we have vision, we have power. And God says, when we, when we look at the spirit of God, he says that the Holy Ghost itself brought vision back to the believer, brought vision back to the old men, brought vision back to the young men. Why? Because the spirit of God gives us vision. Vision represents future. And so anytime the enemy cannot distort our future. Anytime the enemy cannot mess with our future, cannot mess with our sight, he's afraid of it because he cannot do anything with a person that has sight. So it's important in this season to make sure that whatever you do, you hold on to your sight. You are about to see what you heard. God told me to tell you. He said, tell them that they are about to see what they heard. If you notice in the first part of the scripture, the Bible says, Elijah says, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Watch this, but he is praying before God and he hears something in the spirit. He doesn't hear it naturally. He hears it in the spirit. And he says, I hear the abundance of a sound of rain. What, what God was letting him know is that I'm getting ready to release something. Watch this, that you're getting ready to see. You're going to hear it and I'm going to allow you to see it. So I'm getting ready to allow you to see what you been hearing. Uh, you've been hearing that I'm going to bless, but I'm going to allow you to see the blessing. You've been hearing that I'm getting ready to raise you up, but I'm going to allow you to see me raise you up. You've been hearing me say, I'm going to bless your family. I'm getting ready to bless your family. You've been hearing me say, I'm going to save your children. I'm going to save your children. You've been hearing me say, I'm going to bless your finances. I'm going to bless your finances. You are about to hear to see what you've been hearing. You're about to hear what you've been, see what you've been hearing. And the next thing God told me, he says, tell them this, watch this, that there will be rain after you see it and after you call it. There will be rain after you see it and after you call it. How many understands that you can't get anything that you cannot see? You must see it first in order to get it. I tell people all the time, we say, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire. Oh, I'm going to be this. But you cannot be that unless you see it first. You can't be a millionaire unless you first see yourself as a millionaire. It has to be in your spirit. And so God says, get ready because I am getting ready to release the rain. But when I release it, you have to see it first and then call it. So you got to see what I've showed you and then call that thing into existence. You have to see what I said to you and call that thing into being. What did Paul tell us? Well, Paul said it is through him that we live, move, and we have what? Our being, being, I-N-G, a continuation of the blessing of God. He says, so it's important that we understand in this season what I'm about to do for your life. This is my very last thing and I'm just about done. God told me to tell you, and I, and I love this point. He says, this next level of anointing, watch this, is getting ready, is getting ready, is about to get the attention of kings. God says this next level of anointing is about to get the attention of kings. If you notice that Elijah speaks to, a, speaks to Ahab or speaks to the servant, and he tells the servant, go speak to Ahab, tell him to get ready because the rain is on its way. He didn't, it hadn't rained yet. Nobody had seen it. It hadn't rained in three and a half years. 
But Elijah went on what God, what he seen and what he heard, spoke to the servant and said, go tell Ahab to get ready because it's getting ready to rain. I come to tell you tonight to get ready because it is getting ready to rain. I don't know what you've been going through in this season. I don't know what you've been going through in this year, but I do know this, that it is getting ready to rain. This is not just a season or not just a feast where we just come together and God does not need us. See, we come together and God has appointed it. If God appointed it, it means that God is already here. So we must understand as believers and as the people of God that it is getting ready to rain in your life. And I need you to believe me and get on one accord with me tonight and see what I see that it is getting ready to rain. You might as well get your umbrella because it is getting ready to rain in your life. It is getting ready to rain in your finances. It is getting ready to rain in your marriage. It is getting ready to rain in your relationships. It is getting ready to rain on your children. God says, I am getting ready to release an abundance of rain in your life. So it is important that we watch this, be prepared because it is getting ready to rain. So what do I mean by the fact that in this season that this next anointing is going to bring you or take you to a place of getting the attention of kings? It simply means that God is getting ready to bring you before great men, that God is getting ready to release uh, 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 release uh, people into your life, relationships into your life, connections into your life that are going to get you and maneuver you to the place that God has you to be, that, that you cannot get there by your own. There are assigned people that God has for your life that is going to bless this next season in your life. You don't still believe me? If you look at Elijah, Elijah says that he is in a place where the brook has dried up, the water has dried up, the ravens have stopped feeding him. And God says, Elijah, I want you to go to this widow woman because she is prepared to feed you. Watch this. Had Elijah stayed in the place where he was at, he would have never gotten the blessing of God. Watch this. Because the blessing at that moment was not on the man of God, it was on the obedience and the movement of the man. Had he not moved, he would have died there. But because he decided to hear God get up and move, the Bible says that he was blessed at the hand of that woman. So I want you to understand that God is getting ready to bring people into your life that are going to bless you. And yes, it may not necessarily be church people. It may be unchurched folk, but thank God that the wealth of the wicked is in the, is in the hand of the believer. So I believe that God is getting ready to release some things in our life today. Look again. I don't know if you stopped looking at what God said. I don't know if you gave up and just said, that, well, 2020 messed up everything. The devil is a liar. God, everything that God has spoken and everything that God has planned for your life has not changed. That 365 days cannot stop the promise of God. A pandemic cannot stop the promise of God. Viruses cannot stop the promise of God. Everything that God has spoken and decreed and declared over your life shall come to pass. Look again, look again, look again. And I want to tell you this in my, in, in my closing is that Jesus actually did more healing of blindness. If you read the scripture, look in the Bible, he literally did more healing of blindness than he did in any other issue throughout the scripture. He, he healed more blind people than he did raising the dead. He healed more blind people than he did with physical infirmity. He healed more blind people. Why? Because sight is important. Sight is important. And, and without sight, we cannot live. So sight is important. And when I say that, I'm not talking about natural sight. I am talking about spiritual sight. It is important that we as a people of God be able to live. So I ask you to continue to believe God, to trust God, to keep God at his word, that it is time for the believer to look again. Don't stop looking. You may have put it down. You may have put it under the pillow. You may have put it in the nightstand, but go back, get that vision. Go back, get that dream. Go back, dust them plans off. Dust them business plans off. Look at it again. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. The rain is on it. God bless you. I want to pray real quickly for each and every one of us that are all here, and then we'll be back into the hands of Apostle Father. I pray now in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you 
Father, for each and every person that is on this Zoom tonight, we thank you for those who are meeting with us uh, by Facebook Live. Father, I pray that whatever they need tonight, that it be granted. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the opportunity to look again. We thank you for the opportunity, Father God, to, to, to address the whole thing again. And we just give you praise on tonight. We thank you for this feast. We thank you for this harvest. Father, we thank you for this abundance that you have blessed your people with. Oh, God and we just glorify you tonight. Father, I pray, Lord God, for the sick and for the shutting and that you will bless them and raise them up during this feast, God. You told us during the, why the summer song, Lord God, that this is our season of favor, that this is our season of breakthrough. And you said that you were going to bless us, Lord God. You said that you will pour out blessings upon your people during this season. Father, we stand in proxy and we receive it on tonight, God. We don't doubt your word. We don't doubt this, this message. Father, we believe you tonight. We thank you for it, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise on tonight. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. We thank you all for having us tonight. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Did we lose Apostle Ragland? I don't know. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Yes, we did. So if you'll take over Deacon Preston until he jumps back on. Amen. We, we want to thank the man of God. Did we not enjoy the word of God from the man of God? I see people clapping. Let's give let's give another hand praise for the word of God. Amen. Uh, my thing yes. is, is, as we think about this word, my question is, how are we going to apply what we just heard tonight? that the man of God just brought forth. And so, Bishop Slaughter, we want to thank you so much you. for the word of God you. that you blessed us with. I see Thank you all for having me. <laughs> Amen. I see Sister Tamara is, I believe, still on. So we want to thank her for the wonderful selection that she gave. Amen. Let's give her another hand. Amen. We thank God. So, Saints, I just, I'll say this, and then we're going to put it into the hands of our preacher to dismiss us. And then as, as we say, you can go to the virtual fellowship hall. Um, I really appreciate uh, your engagement in the service. I appreciate you coming every night to be a part of this. I wanna thank God for Apostle Raglan and his vision and all those that have worked with him to make this happen. So I see Apostle Raglan is right here. So we wanna give it to our Apostle Raglan and he will further the service. God bless you, Apostle. God bless you. Thank you, Dick and Preston. What happened was, uh, all of a sudden, everything went blank. So I said, and this is the devil trying to mess me up. But I thank God. Um, I'm in a different room, and thank God my grandson uh, had it up in, in here. But again, Apostle Slaughter, God bless you. Thank you for that word on the night. Amen. Amen. The thing that you were saying was so important for us to be able to take away the night. Well, you were preaching, I just point out one, I look at Sister Charmaine, because you know, she and I have been talking about some of the things that you know the Lord said he's gonna do. And I'm telling you, in this season, you're gonna see it. And I just thank God, I thank God for that. Um, also, as, as uh, Deacon Preston has said, we're going to have, um, let me not be, let me say this, I said it earlier, I want to say it again, because we didn't have everybody on initially. Uh, we got a report from our sister, Flora Washington, that her son, Brother Allen, uh, went today. And as he left, was leaving his doctor's appointment, the doctor told him that the mass he had had shrunk 50%. And I give God Amen. Praise Amen. Amen. I give God thanks. I tell you what, if I didn't have these sweatpants on, I'd stand up and, and you know, just praise God. But... You know, I got the shirt and tie and everything going, but the sweatpants ain't gonna look that good tonight. I'm just telling y'all. But I thank God, I thank God for how He's blessed us. Sister Tamara, again, we thank you. You know, it's my desire when all this is over that, you know, many of those that we are hearing this week um, will be back on, be back, and you will come to Cobham and just praise God and worship God with us. Now, uh, Sister Brenda, you want to give us some highlights for tomorrow night, who we have, and you, you didn't do that while I was out, did you, Big Impressive? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, on tomorrow night, we have Bishop Jerry Carter from Fort Wayne, Indiana. 
and Brother Jaden Arnold from Atlanta, Georgia. Our prayer leader is Deacon Walter Preston. On Friday night, we have Evangelist Carly Taylor from Lexington, Kentucky. And our soloist is Brother Tyler Hamlet from Oakland, California. Our prayer leader would be Deacon Ronnie Raglan. And on Sabbath day, if the weather's permissible, we will have service, worship service outside at 1 p.m. And our prayer leader would be Elder Larry Thurston. And our speaker is Apostle James Rudolph Ragland. Oh, that's good. You're picking up bad habits. Again, um, <laughs> got them from your wife. <laughs> um, Ashley uh, Digan Preston and uh, Digan. Kenny uh, switching, uh, uh, Deacon Kenny will be uh, leading us in prayer on tomorrow evening. Um, okay. Uh, Deacon, I mean, uh, Bishop Slaughter, you have final words. We're not doing a form of benediction, but just release us tonight in your own way, your own words. And after that, we will go to the social hall. When we do that, we just ask everybody to um, make your screen visible, if you don't mind, so we can all see each other and just uh, enjoy one another. Um, for, for a moment and highlight some conversation. Uh, bless you, Bishop. Bless you. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, saints. And, and again, thank you all for having us. We don't take it lightly. Uh, this is my wife. We always talk about this is our second family. So we, we, we love, amen, Virginia. Amen. We coming back yes. soon, Apostle. Coming back real soon. Yeah, amen. But again, we thank the Almighty and just for being in the feast of the Almighty and just being a, amongst the people of God. Um, by way of Zoom, you know, who would have ever thought, but we thank God that we, uh, he has afforded us the opportunity to do, and just want to tell you all to be encouraged, um, there's nothing that God cannot do, and so just continue to be encouraged, continue to trust the Almighty for whatever it is, and believe him in this season for some hard things, because I promise you, we serve a God that can do any thing. And so we thank him. I love you all. Apostle, thank you all again for, for having us. Lady Jane, love you. And all of you all, God bless you. Amen. Amen. So, saints, if you would, if you would just go to the, uh, um, I'm just twitching something here. Okay, now, yes. Oh, yes. I think I